Hello, people. Government black magic, what is it? I'm going to tell you right now what it is. It's what's being used against everybody, the multitudes, with this quote unquote coronavirus and this lockdown. It's nothing short of insidious. It is black magic. They are using the power of suggestion against masses of people. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of a thing called the placebo effect. That's when they give people a sugar pill and they say it's going to cure them of some malady. And uh, the person believes that it's going to. And so they take it and sure enough, their mind is so powerful that it works. Okay, well, there's an opposite effect, the nocebo effect which does just the opposite, can cause people to think that they're getting sick or that uh, can bring fear to people, just the opposite of the placebo effect. This is the power of suggestion. This is the power of mass hypnosis. This is the power that the cultists, and I'm, I think I'm going to start using that term. Uh, I got that from David Icke, and I think it's very appropriate. This is what the cultists do to control people, and they've been doing it for years. If you if you look at one of my last videos here, I talked about how mass marketing instituted this uh, mass brainwashing by a guy named Edward Bernay way back in the 1920s and 30s, who taught this to the government and to big corporations. The power of the mind is a, is a magnificent thing. Most people don't realize that they, they are co-creators with God, with the mind, with the all. The hermetic principles apply here. And I've done videos in the past on the hermetic principles the, uh, written by the ancient Egyptian Thoth, or the Greeks called him uh, Hermes uh, Trismegistus. Hermetic principles. They're as old as some of the most ancient civilizations and, and what's happening right now. I've said many times in the past, nothing is other than what you believe it to be. We all are co-creators with the mind, with the all. We are in the all, and the all is in all. We are within the all, and the all is within all. That means that just as much as we are a part of the creative intelligence that put things into being here on what we call the earth or in this universe or in this cosmos or how about many many cosmoses uh, we are part of that mind that infinite mind we are but a vibratory um, appearance we are nothing but vibrations from the mind but also we have that eternal mind within us. And so we can use the power of that mind through our speech and our words and our thoughts. In fact, we do it all the time. That's how life works, people. Life works by our perception, our perception. It's not really rocket science, but it takes a leap of faith because of the conditioning that we have all been programmed with to understand that all of the things that we perceive, we are creating by the moment. In other words, we have a mind, we have a subconscious mind. This is part of the physical being. That subconscious mind has been programmed since birth. 
It's called societal conditioning. Ever since we were born, we were this clear glass of water that was programmed by dumping mud, by dumping dirt into it. And pretty soon that clear glass of water no longer existed. What we have is a muddied glass of water. And that muddied glass of water is called ego. It's called self. It's called who we think we are, but we're not really. What we, what we really are is one with the creative intelligence, one with the force, one with, if you want to call it that, God. And so when we were programmed like this, that's how we create our reality. There is nothing in this universe that isn't vibratory energy as Einstein and others who are into quantum physics and string theory and some other uh, scientific thought that is just scratching the surface as to th how things operate. This is a holographic universe. It's a holographic universe. We project holograms from our mind onto the matter, okay, that is already here. It's already here, people. It's part of the creation, okay, and we're part of that creation. We are co-creators. Now, if you take that concept, and if you have to reel this back, uh, rewind the video, and, and listen to it again, do so. But if you take that concept that we create everything, in other words, nothing, nothing out here is what we imagine it to be or what we actually it is what we imagine it to be but it's not what we what we're seeing is what we're imagining not what it really is okay so we take we take the stuff of the universe and we actually make different things out of it we are producing a show if you will as we go now taking that principle into your mind and, and, and thinking about that principle, you're going to realize the insidious, insidious uh, effect that let's say a black magician, now we're, we're going to talk about black magic and we're going to talk about white magic. Actually, nothing is magic. It's just a word that people put on something that uh, they don't understand, okay, in the use of maybe a technique that they don't understand. So bear with me on this. It's not like, ooh, he's talking about dark, uh, evil things. No, the dark, evil things that I'm talking about are the people that use these principles in a dark way. The people that are in the government use black magic. Now they call it psychological warfare. And it is psychological warfare, except it's worse than psychological warfare because their black magic, their programming, their words of power, Egyptians call this hey cow or haiku, or however you want to pronounce it, words of power, ancient Egyptian thought. Words of power can go out into the universe. Now, the universe was created with sound. It was created by the OM, A-U-M, AUM sound, projected from the Creator's mouth, or the, cre the voice of God or the voice of uh, uh, imagination, or the intelligence of the Creator, projected things into being like that. Scientists call it the Big Bang Theory. So if the world was created this way, and we are part of that creation, us realizing that, or anybody realizing that, for uh, that matter, 
can use these things to their advantage or to their disadvantage. Now, we use these things all day long. We uh, self-sabotage ourselves with our thoughts. We say things out loud. Now, when you repeat things out loud, sound is powerful. Sound coupled with intention is powerful. So if you use your intention and you use sound with that or words with that or words, thought words, word thoughts, you can actually produce things in this holographic universe and they know that. The government are black magicians, if you want to call them that. That's another way of describing what they do. They mix up this, this potion of thought. Okay. They mix up this potion of propaganda. They mix up this potion of sound. Okay. And what do they use? They use a vehicle called the mainstream media. And this mainstream media is constantly yapping and yapping and yapping and yapping 24-7 and spewing out black magic to the minds of the populace. And the minds of the populace are tuned into these different mainstream media outlets like CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, uh, all CBS, NBC, whatever. And these people are employed by the dark cultists to put out their message, to put out their spell upon the people. This is very deep stuff when you think about it in this regard. So if that is true, if everybody is under a spell, if everybody, everybody is under mass hypnosis, They can put out spells to convince people, like I mentioned earlier about the nocebo and placebo effect, to convince people of their own uh, demise, their own dis-ease, their own uh, harm to themselves. Okay, In other words, they put out the thought and then people pick up the thought. And it goes in their mind and it manifests out, manifests out into their reality. So though these people know what they're doing. They're way, way ahead of the game. You think that they're uh, not, not aware of this stuff, but actually they are aware. This is hidden knowledge. This is called occult knowledge. Now, is occult a bad thing? No, occult just means hidden. Now, cult, dark cultists, yes, that's a bad thing. Because dark cultists use this knowledge against their fellow man. Now, people like me who study scripture, who study ancient teachings, who study uh, the ancient Kabbalah, the tree of life, the Egyptian tree of life, the Kabbalion, the her Hermetic Principles, the Book of Thoth, dig for this knowledge. We dig for this knowledge. We're spiritual seekers. And so when we share this with other people, sometimes it's, it's hard for them to understand or sometimes it goes right over their head or sometimes they just, they don't get it because they're in this trance perpetrated by these dark government entities, these cultists. How do you repel this? How do you protect yourself? Well, I'll tell you how. And I want you to pass this around to whoever you can uh, tell it to. You, you use the same thing, okay, that they use against you. You use back. You repel. Now, this is how you do it. You might say an incantation, okay, or a some words of power. We'll just call it words of power because some people get hung up with that word 
incantation. It's not evil. Words of power are used for protection. Okay. So you can say things like the evil cultists and their evil plans will backfire on them. That's a sentence. You can make up your own sentence. You can make up your own words. The thing is, is that you want to turn this energy that they're projecting, this belief, you want to turn it and send it out into the universe. You don't even, you don't even have to say it to these people as long as you verbalize. Let's imagine for a minute that you're the creator, which you are because you are part of the creator. Let's imagine for a minute that you're the creator and that you want to stop these people, these dark evil ones, from perpetrating their deeds against mankind. Then what you do is you use the words of sound and you use the words of thought and propel that out into the universe. You don't need to pick up a gun. You don't need to uh, rise up in, in, in masses of, of people. You, you could do it with your thought, masses, masses of thought and awakening. That's another uh, haiku or another word, a word of power that you can say out there is that the masses shall awaken to the evil deeds being perpetrated upon them. The masses shall awaken to the evil deeds being perpetrated upon them. Say that. Say it with me. The masses shall awaken to the evil deeds being perpetrated upon them. These are the kind of thoughts, these are the kind of sounds, these are the kind of words that you want to put out into the atmosphere. These words travel around and around and around the planet. Sound goes out into the cosmos. Thought goes out into the cosmos. Thought is actually faster than the speed of light. The speed of light is in incredibly fast but the speed of thought thinking yourself in a certain location for instance let's say you want to imagine that you're standing on the coast of Maine if you picture it in your mind if you think it you're there if you want to travel to other planets if you think it if you wish to travel through the cosmos with your light body your Merkaba, you may do so by the power of your mind. If you wish protection around your physical being from electromagnetic frequencies and from evil vibrations coming from space, you can do that with meditation and the power of your mind. As above, so below. As you imagine, so it shall manifest. These are key principles that you need to listen to and understand so that you can protect yourself, so that you can project thoughts out into the universe, so that masses of people can change the courses or the course of civilization and history. Great thinkers have always known these principles. It's time for you to resurrect yourself. In the Egyptian tree of life, when a person raises their consciousness from the lower ego realm to the higher immortal realm, it's called a resurrection. A resurrection of consciousness. Use your resurrection of consciousness thus so that you may awaken to your power as an individual and not just be blown around on the sea of life. The sea of life. 
from the infinite ocean. This is what you need to learn, people. This is a crash course. You need to pay attention to this. Take advantage of other people's study. Years and years and years and years of study and meditation. Use the principles that I am giving to you to create a world that you want. Do you want a dystopian future? Do you want an end times future? Do you want a doom and gloom type future? Or do you want a magnificent paradise, uh, peaceful future? In reality, do you want war? See, this stuff has all been programmed into your being since day one. And that's why I have such a problem with the evil religionists, the antichrists, the ones that teach things from the scriptures that indicate that we must go through a tribulation and we must uh, suffer and we must uh, you know, suffer the pangs of hell and suffer the pangs of uh, destruction. Don't you think, I want you to think about this, don't you think that these people that are using these powerful techniques, don't you think that they read the Bible? Don't you think that they take everything out of Scripture and say to themselves, well, hey, these people believe that there's going to be a great tribulation. These pe people believe <clears throat> that they're going to have to suffer. Uh, these people believe that there shall be plagues brought upon the earth. These people believe that they have to suffer to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Or they that they have to go through long, hard, arduous times before they can see paradise. That's not true, people. That's why the enlightened ones said, like Yeshua and Buddha, Yeshua said the kingdom of heaven is not over there, it's not over here, it's not out there. It's in here. It's in your heart. It's in your soul. Your ba is your soul, B-A, your Ba is your soul. Your Ka, K-A, is your spirit. Your Merkapa is your spirit body, which includes the etheric body, the physical body, and the heart is definitely your soul. So Christ or Yeshua knew these things. How did he know these things? It doesn't matter how he know, knew them. It doesn't matter if he was a son of God. We're all sons of God. Or it doesn't matter if he was God. We are all God. Are we the big God? The big mind? No, we're the, we're the smaller God within the big mind. You have to grasp that concept. If you do, if you do grasp this concept, that right there is a huge relief as to what's going on around you. Because then you will, you will realize that you were, always, you were always here and you always will be here no matter what happens. It will overcome your fear of what is surrounding you in this illusion. I call it the delusion of the illusion that surrounds you. It surrounds you. You're in a soup, okay? You're in a continual manifestation of soup. But there's a higher manifestation that is creating this soup. It's really important, people, that you realize what I'm talking about here, so that you can use your own faculties, your own mental vibrations, your own sounds together in unison 
start alone, share it with others. Where do you think prayer came from? What do you think real prayer is? It's nothing short of what I have just been describing. People pray and pray and pray, but they don't grasp the concept. Because these words of power that I'm talking about that you can put out into the universe, these sounds, these incantation, it takes focused intent. You can say words all day long and, and uh, they won't have, yes, they will have a certain amount of power, but they won't have the power that you can give them with focused intent. You need to awaken. You need to focus your intentions out into the universe. Out into the universe. Be one with the co-creative principle. Stop in their tracks these evildoers that are using black magic against the populace through brainwashing, through propagation of ideas, through telling people that we're all in this very, very dire situation. There's a book called Hypnotizing Maria by Richard Bach. That's a good book to read. Another one of his is Illusions. It explains the same thing, what an enlightened author he is. It ex explains all of this stuff in a story type way. For instance, if you're sitting in an audience and you're watching a hypnotist on stage and he's got a person up there and everybody's sitting up there watching and they're grinning and they're wondering what is he going to do and he puts this person in a trance and then he tells that person you're in a prison you have four walls around you and you can't get out. And sure enough, like that, that person feels like they're in a prison. They go to, to walk and they bump into a wall that isn't there. And the people in the audience are laughing. Because they're going, that silly person, they're just in a trance and they've been uh, convinced that uh, they're in a little room and they're locked in a room and they can't get out. But as soon as that hypnotist on stage snaps his fingers and brings that person out of their hypnotic trance, then that's when uh, they, they, they no longer feel in prison. Why? Because it was all in their mind. Just like it's in your mind that you have to be controlled by these powers to be, these evil, dark occultists, these government black magicians. Wake up, people. Take back your power. Take back your God-given power. And do something about the situation that you're in. You can take any means you want. I'm not telling you how to take back your power. You can do it this way. You can do it on the lower third dimensional level. Whatever you do, though, you must wake up. And you must realize that you have the power. Nothing is other than what you believe it to be. Nothing is other than what you believe it to be. Think about these things, and uh, I'll leave it there today, and I'll just say blessings to you all. Amen or Amen Ra.